Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Michael, KE4EST. And I kind of want to do a short little video here talking about the static keyword. So you can see I've got something on the screen here to kind of start with here. Now there's a couple reasons I want to do this. One is say you've been programming with Arduino for a while. You don't have a C background in coding or anything like that. You're a hobbyist. But you want to kind of make your code look a little bit better and you want to learn more about C so you're curious about the static keyword or how you can use it. Or the other thing is, you know, I've seen people on forums ask about it and talk about it and then there'll be, a, you know, there's always this instance where somebody asking a question about something and they're like, I'm trying to use such and such sensor to work such and such actuator or something. And somebody in there will come through and they'll say hey you know post your code up so the guy says oh, okay here's my code and there's always going to be that one guy who's going to go in there and say why'd you make that a global why why is that a global and the guy will come back with you know of course you know i'm just a hobbyist i don't know you know but that's the only way i can get it you know to work so let's go over this kind of real quick here so first of all, the static keyword is a, is part of a store. You know, something it's a storage class, and that's not to be confused with like classes in C++. But it's a type of storage class when the compiler goes through and checks and does its, you know, what it does without getting in, you know, maybe a whole another video or something on how the compiler works and all that. But as it goes through, it's going to see this a static keyword. And what it will do is it will tell it what to do with, you know, the variable that's in front of it. And what it will do is take and say, okay, let's make this kind of like a global. Let's stick it on the heap. Or stick it in the heap, you know. And instead of putting it on stack and that's another video too on how that works but it's going to be placed in a part of memory so that it's going to be kept there all the time be kept up with if you change it or if it gets incremented or changed or whatever it's always got it no matter you know where the code is or what it's doing that's kind of how it works but we'll start off with this program right here and just look at this so say you've got here's the program you got you know this is just an example i've come up with and in the setup program, all we got, you know, we call Cyril, set it up so we can use the Cyril monitor. And then, you know, let's pretend here we got all kinds of code in here, you know, more lines of code than this, obviously, but it's somewhere we're wanting to keep up with a count of how many times a certain function's been called and say, you know, this, I'm just calling it print function counter. But it could be whatever function you're doing. It don't have to be this. You don't have to have, you don't have, to have a separate function just to say you want to count. So say you want it every time a certain sensor is read or a certain actuator goes off or whatever happens. You want to keep a log of that and a count of that. Okay. You don't have to have a separate function for that. In the function itself, the actuator function, you could have a way to count it or whatever. But I'm just showing this here for an example, like I said. So we come down here, we call this, and we'll, we go to this function, and, and you can see what's going to happen. We're going to set up, you know, we want to keep everything in check. We don't have no globals here, so uh, make our code look really good and all that. You know, globals are a big no-no unless you have to. There's a few things when I'm doing Arduino I think's fine, like if you're putting digital reads and writes and things like that. Um, or not digital reads and writes, but when you're setting up your pin mode setups and things like that, and what pins you want to use up here at the top above setup, you know, say you want to, you know, pin 5 is going to be whatever for an LED, so LED equals 5, and your sensor 1 is going to be on pin 6 or something. I don't see a problem with doing that, and then pin mode, of course, will be in setup, you know, um, but there's no problem with that. You know, for most things, you want to keep it in scope as much as you can. You want to keep the variables in the function that you're using it in. Because not only 
Does it make it easier to find? You gotta scroll all the way up to the top of the program. Go up here and try to find what variable that is. When you're down here, you got a really long program. You're down here somewhere looking at a function. And say this wasn't here. Say it was more like this here. And it says function count is equal to. Well, okay, you wouldn't even have this line here at all. Say this. Say this line here was not here. And then you get down to function count plus plus here. But it's all quite obvious what's going on here. But say you didn't have that, and it was some, or it's something else. And you're like function count. What? What, what is that? So you got to scroll all the way back up to the top of the code and try to find it and come back down. So if you put it right here, it's easy to access. And then another reason you'd want to keep things, the variables and the function you're using them in, is it don't accidentally get changed somewhere else. Because when it's in a global, anything in the code can see it and do anything with it. And so you're saying, well, that's what I want in this. I want to be able to count it because I know if I come down here right and I say long function count equals zero, and then function count plus plus, let's print it out right now. We're just printing it just, you know, for example, but you could store it in something or do whatever. And then when I come back up here, do some code, I want to hit this again, this line here again, go back down here again. What's going to happen? It's going to put this back on zero. So your count is never really going to count off. Right, so you're like, I, I got to put a global. I've got to make this a global up here somewhere. Well, that's where the static keyword comes in. Like right now, if we upload this program right here, that I've got, just to show the point here. Okay, so let's bring up the serial monitor, and that's pretty much what you think is going to happen right there. It's going to come down and call it. It's going to define long each time it comes in. Throw it on the stack. Add a 1 to it. You know, obviously the plus plus. Print. Then we'll go back up. And then it's going to back down as it loops through your code. And you're just going to, it's always going to be a 1. You're never going to get anything but a 1. Okay. So, you're like, okay. Let's fine. Take this here. Take it out. Let's take it up here and make it a global. Let's just put a line in there for neatness. Okay. Now let's re upload this code. And what's going to happen now? Well, now it's doing what it's supposed to. Well, that's counting up really fast, but that's counting up, as you can see. Let's throw a little bit of delay in there. Okay, and do that again. All right, there we go. So now it's counting like it's supposed to, but you've broken the rule, and you've got this here up this global. Okay, let's take that back out. Let's come back down here, put it back in. And let's do this static okay now with the static when the compiler goes through this okay and you keep you probably thinking to yourself well yeah but it keeps going to keep hitting this every time when the compiler comes through this there's some things you know when you compile things that it compiles just a little bit differently or it maybe acts a little differently or things happen a little differently than what you're expecting. What you, you know, if you follow it, you know, line by line, your code and go through it. Okay, troubleshooting my code or looking or whatever. But when it hits this right here and it sees static, the compiler is going to take this, put it in the heap, and initialize it, define it one time. Okay, and so that when the program is running. You know, continuously running when you got your program just sitting there running for hours and days or whatever. It ain't gonna hit this static long function count equals zero every time. This is gonna be taken and put in a place like a global, but it's where 
nothing else can access it. I could go up here, even though it acts like a global, and somewhere in the loop, I could try to use function count, and it's going to give me an error. I have, say if I had another function somewhere down here, try to use function count, even though it's kind of acting like a global, it's not going to let me access it. So now, we can upload this code here. And we should still see the same behavior as if it was a global. And there we go. And if we just to show you, if I go up here and say, let's make function, if I can type count equals 12, I don't know. Now let's try to compile this. Function count was not declared in this scope. So even though this is now acting like a global, it's not a global. Even though it gets stuck in the heap where the other globals are, it's got its own little special place and you know everything is getting you know the memory manager knows how to take care of it and all that when everything's compiled and uploaded. So 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 there you go. So I hope this helped you figure out using the static keyword in Arduino because I know a lot of guys ain't you know you don't have a C background you know you're not a C programmer you didn't go to college and you're not a com you know in the computers where you worked 20 years programming and writing code and all that you're just learning you're wanting to you know see how this stuff goes and you start you know you play the blink program and this that and the other okay that that was a long time ago you've moved enough now to where you're writing your own code you're starting to learn enough of the C code to write your own code write your own functions your own everything making your own projects instead of just copying and pasting somebody else's code and saying oh okay that's cool you're doing your own thing okay so now you're wanting to make your code look better or you're wondering you know that guy that nagged you on one of the forums about why'd you make this here a global and and then you ask, you know, I see this all the time. <laughs> well, how should I have done it? Well, you need to do your research. And it's just sometimes it's like, really, you know, these guys, I know you've got 30 years of code and you're, you're probably an old coot sitting around, you know, whatever. And you ain't got to sit there and write a book, man. Just at least say, research the static keyword or something if you don't want to go into details. But anyway, I hope this helped you out on using the static keyword when you're writing your Arduino code and maybe to make your code a little bit better and look a little bit neater. Until the next video, this is Michael, KE4EST73.